All right, Cubby. Actually, Cubby, a uh, question for you. I, yeah. I could have asked you this offline, but I'll forget. Do you want to do, Mark always used to do for me at the start of the year and usually at the start of each split, a power rankings video? Do you oh. want to do a power rankings video? Oh, all right. I mean, yeah, I, we, we can work on one. I, I got some time here before the season starts. I'm in. Uh, what do we got? Two weeks? Less than two weeks? Two weeks later. Hey, it's me, Shorter, Hotter Mark, and it's Tier List O'Clock. Let's get right into it. All right, first on the list, ask for Super Team. It's going to be Cloud9 in a tier of their own. I look at this roster, and I think it's very cut and dry. Jojo, Pion, and Berserker, for me, are the two most valuable players to have in LCS. When you look at these two, and then look at the rest of their competition, not to mention just the second best players at their role, I feel like that is the largest gap that we have among all the roles in LCS, and those two guys are the most valuable players to have on your team. Oh, yeah. They also have Blabber who arguably is the person that is fighting for GOAT status in NA, given where he is at, all the accolades that he has won, both individually and as a team. Jungle's a very competitive role, and Blabber is one of the best. Pair that with Fudge and Vulcan, guys. This team's cut and dry. At worst, they're going to beat themselves. And that is really, I think, what C9 is going to have to battle with, more so than the other teams in the league. Is uh, I expect them to be the top dogs. It's hard to stay on top. It's hard to continue to push yourself to evolve, especially when it is a new patch where so many things are going to be new. But unless it's a super team curse, I think a lot of people expect C9 to come out on top. And frankly, I do too. The expectation of this team should be to win the region. If not, that's disappointing. C9 has been the savior of NA in terms of attending worlds, but also we'll see if they can beat the super team curse. It might be an interesting battle and could be more interesting than the battle these guys face on the rift this split in spring. As again, I have these guys as the top dogs by a long shot. All right, so now that I've disrespected the entire league and hopefully fueled them to beat C9 this split, if they can beat the super team allegations, it's time to go to A tier, and I've got FlyQuest coming up first. When I look at FlyQuest's roster, it makes sense. Whippo, Inspired, and Jensen are three players that when you pair them up with a rookie bot lane, I think they're going to be of great service to Masu and Busio. Whippo constantly talks in comms, and his play style is truly a magnet for enemy teams, drawing pressure to the top side, relieving it from bot lane, and still always staying relevant in the game given how Bwipo plays. You pair that with Inspired, who I feel like is an outstanding jungler. This guy was MVP of LCS, not to mention LEC when he was over in EU, and is a fantastic player that does a great job of balancing his own farm and resources and also impacting the map in a very intelligent manner. And also, you've got Jensen in the mid lane, who is one of the most accomplished players in LCS history. The knowledge and experience these three bring to a bot lane that I have seen firsthand in challengers have crazy hands. Masu and Busio are two of the most valuable prospects that we have had in the 2023 and 2022 summer, respectively. We gave both Masu and Busio the most valuable prospect awards in challengers for a reason. I believe in these guys. I think that FlyQuest are going to be the most competitive team with C9 this split. Next up, following up FlyQuest in A tier, it's going to be NRG, as I feel like FlyQuest and NRG are the two teams that are most likely to push C9. Uh, now, NRG, props to them. I think their offseason was great. They just won. They kept the core of the team. Ignore wanted to go to EU. I think Hui was the best possible replacement. At worst, I think Hui's a side grade. If anything, could be an upgrade, especially with the bot champ pool. I feel like being very expanded coming into the next split. Ignore always known for the engagers. Well, guess what? Hui is an ex-mid laner. I think that his pool is a lot deeper as a support, not to mention the synergy he already has built up with FBI throughout the years. Uh, so props to NRG on that. Also, keeping the core of the staff, I think that NRG really benefited from always showing up when it mattered last year. Uh, you know, the 9-9 rec record in the summer split, it was like, hey, they always beat the good teams, but they'll lose random games. And I'm kind of curious to see if NRG can win all the games this time. If you want to be a top team, I feel like you have to beat everyone. And also, NRG are going to have a little bit more of a target on their backs as defending champs and a roster that people in NA now really respect as being strong. Uh, I think that this could lead to NRG having a, a decent split. I, I expect this team to make playoffs. I expect this team to be competitive in playoffs. I expect this team to be a tough out. But I also expect everyone to treat them as such. Uh, but, you know, just to make NRG feel comfortable, a little bit of disrespect. I feel like putting them in third as the defending champs could help them for the next split. Excited to see this uh, team return to LCS. And uh, I think it's a team that made fans out of a lot of people and we'll see if that can continue going into spring of 24. In a tier of their own, I've got Team Liquid. Uh, now, this is actually pretty tough where to put them. I debated putting them with both FlyQuest and NRG. Also in the same tier, Shopify Rebellion. I landed here though because I feel like this team 
can be very competitive with anyone in the league, but I don't have them uh, nearly as likely to win the league as FlyQuest or NRG. Let's start with the positives for TL. Impact is back, and if you're a TL fan, it feels like Impact is coming home. He was with TL when they were at their top, winning four straight LCS splits. He's reunited with Core. Impact is still a fantastic top laner, if not the best top laner that we have in LCS. That's great. Uh, and also, Impact has Umti coming with him. Uh, Umti is someone that has been rumored to come to NA here and there. He's going to be on TL with Impact. I think that Umti is a decent replacement for Pioshik. I think that when TL were at their best in 23 Summer, it was when they were playing very quick games, uh, making sure that they were taking advantage of their landing prowess in both top and bot, and playing fast with Pioshik to snowball games early. That's when Umti's at his best as well, so that makes sense to me. Now, where TL can get stronger, I think that I want to see Yawn be a better team fighter. I think that Yawn lanes really well as a marksman and didn't get enough credit for his landing as a rookie. I think that in year two, now that he's not a rookie, I want to see him play team fights a little bit slower and have better positioning to set up to start the team fight. And then APA in the mid lane, a lot of people knock his champion pool. Good news for TL fans in the offseason is that he's upgraded his champion pool. I saw him in CQ playing the Azir, which a lot of fans wanted to see. He was over in Korea boot camping with a positional coach that TL set him up with. I've seen APA add a lot of champs throughout uh, the seasons that I've covered him in Challengers. Uh, good to see him taking advantage of another offseason with his work ethic. I just want to see APA be a little bit of a stronger laner. I also got the junglers that I have above TL uh, on my tier list. You've got Blabber, Inspired Contracts. I don't have Umti on that level. And another part of the reason why I put TL in B tier just below FlyQuest and NRG. Also in a tier of their own, I have Shopify Rebellion. Now, the reason I put them here is that I feel like they're a little bit less likely than TL uh, to compete with C9, NRG, and FlyQuest, uh, which is why I put them slightly below. But I don't see them missing playoffs at all. So they just kind of ended up here. I think this is a team that actually is pretty well put together. I look at this team and there's a lot of built-in synergy with players and also with the coaches. Revan worked with the Cloud9 Challengers roster that housed Fake God, Zazel, and their sub in Tomio. Also, I think a lot of people will be pleasantly surprised at how much better Fake God is from the last time they saw him in LCS. A lot of people have been saying, you know, is he going to take the Doka arc of going back through the Challengers system and coming back to LCS? And I feel like Fake God is very likely uh, to fit that bill. I think that he is a very consistent top laner that can be a rock in the top side. Should fit the meta very nicely. Uh, also, Zazel, this guy runs comms on teams. Zazel is very intelligent about the game. That's something that I have also given Insanity a lot of credit for. This is going to be a smart team. And if you are trying to beat the top teams, I feel like these guys will have unique reads on the meta and will be willing to play it, much like what Boogie and Insanity did on TSM this past year. One of my concerns for Shopify Rebellion is I actually don't know how B-Boy is going to look here. Uh, he has been a beast in LATAM and also Brazil, uh, but coming to LCS. I'm curious to see how B-Boy is able to fit in and compete with some of the other marksmen in a role that I actually feel like is competitive. And uh, the rookies being added in terms of Masu and Meech, I actually have being stronger players than B-Boy uh, stepping into LCS. Also for Shopify Rebellion, I mean, this is a decent team. But in terms of individuals, we aren't claiming that anyone is going to be uh, top three in their role. Uh, if anything, the most likely person to do that, probably Insanity and then Zazel next. Uh, I feel like Shopify Rebellion, they're going to be at their best when they are able to play some unique strats. And uh, Insanity and Boogie are very much playing for mid push, then using that to impact the map, impact bot lane. That is what I expect the meta to be for spring. So I think that could do Shopify Rebellion some favors. Uh, this is a team that I expect to be really feisty and one that can push some of the middle of the pack but i just have been less likely uh, to go far or maybe win the league as tl that's why i put them in a tier of their own here all right last three teams final tier d tier kicking off with dignitas i didn't just put them here because you know it starts with the name but dignitas i actually was on the record saying that i had this team uh, placing eighth most likely going into the lcs split i've changed that a little bit and this is the singular conclusion that i've taken away from champs Q. And that's that Tome and Isles are actually playing pretty well right now. I think that in a meta that's going to be very much bot lane focused, uh, I saw Tome and Isles put enough games together where I think their laning is going to be just fine. And when I look at that team, Rich in the top lane, he's a strong laner. XU and Dove, if they're able to affect the map and go bot, which is the strategy I think every team in the LCS is pretty much going to be running. It's what the meta requires at the moment, unless they make Grub stronger. I think Dignitas actually is the most likely to make playoffs out of these last three teams. Uh, I think they also don't suffer as much from the youth uh, as much as Immortals and Hundred Thieves will. Dignitas has a little bit more experience on their shoulders. 
And this is a team where I feel like if the bot lane can lane, Dignitas can find a few more wins than the other two. Uh, my concerns for Dignitas is that mid jungle will not be strong enough uh, in the rest of LCS. And also, uh, Rich and Tomo aren't the strongest team fighters. I think that they're very, very strong laners. Uh, but team fighters in their position, I don't rate them quite as highly as some of the other players in the league. So I think Dignitas will be at their best when they're able to take advantage of strong laning from Tomo, Isles, and Rich. And also Exiu, who had a lot of strong early game plans in Challengers League. I feel like that's the best part of his gameplay coming into LCS as well. And that's why I have Dignitas actually uh, first in this final tier. All right, next up in D tier, I have Immortals. Uh, again, I think one of these three teams will round out playoffs. I have Immortals as the second most likely. A lot of this is actually, I think Armeo and Mask have the potential to be a decent mid-jungle duo. When I watched Mask's tape in EMEA Masters with Unicorns of Love, this guy does his job. Uh, I think that he played out his lanes decently well. He had a good idea of what was going on on the map. He played fights all right. I saw Mask was actually being pretty consistent, and I thought that his team did some more damage uh, to Mask than Mask did to the rest of the team watching the tape. Pair that with Armeo, who I know can lead teams in comms. Uh, and I also think Armeo, you know, he's really never had a fair shot in LCS. Even that starting gig with EG this past split, uh, it was pitched as it's a six-man roster with Shaden. I am excited to see Armeo get a shot where he's able to practice with this team for the entirety. There have been no visa issues coming in LCS, which is a blessing for everyone. Uh, and I hope that Armeo can prove that he is an LCS level jungler. Because whenever I see this guy, he is high rank in champs queue, high rank in solo queue. And I think Armeo is a very smart player. Pair this with Tactical and Olay on the bot side. I think IMT could be decent. My big concern is Castle in the top lane. I had Dignitas first in this tier because I rate uh, Rich much higher than Castle. And give Tomo and Isles a side edge in the bot lane. I think bot lane is a little bit more important too. Uh, but I really hope that Armeo and Mask can prove they are a decent mid jungle duo on this team and outkick their coverage and help Immortals move up in the standings. But this is where I have them. Look, last team in D tier, the one that I feel like is the least likely to make playoffs, that's going to be 100 Thieves. Reasons for that, it's spring. This is a young team. No other team has two rookies in LCS. And looking at Sniper and Meech, look, these guys have game in team fights, but historically, each have had resources going throughout Amateur and Challengers. And they're on opposite sides of the map. Only one can get resources. And looking at the meta, it's most likely Meech. I think a top lane is a really difficult role to step into at the highest level, given the amount of knowledge that you have to have about matchups and managing your wave states. And that's something that I don't expect Sniper to be great at from day one. I think there's going to be a lot of growing pains in terms of laning with this team. I have concerns with this team, and I think they're going to be a lot of games where uh, they get blown out of the water and lane. And also, only having 14 games to really adapt two rookies to LCS is something that I don't think uh, is very likely for 100 Thieves to do. This is a team where I hope that they give these young players a chance and stick with them through summer, uh, as I think they're going to be a lot of growing pains in spring. My expectations are low, and we'll see if 100 Thieves can beat those. Thanks again to Travis for having me, as well as this community for being so welcoming. It's felt great joining Hotline League, as well as making some videos on this channel. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube right over here. Shout out to my editor, Manny, who is fantastic at his job once again. That's it. I'm Cubby, and that's your LCS tier list. It's a new year, and not only does that mean a new season of the LCS, but it also means new Alienware products. You gotta check out the new Alienware M16 R2. It just got announced, and this notebook is beautiful. The M16 R2 has been redesigned to be 15% smaller than its predecessor. It comes with up to an NVIDIA RTX 4070 GPU, and it's easier to travel with while still keeping your system cool while gaming with its new cryotech thermal design for more efficient cooling. It has a stealth mode, allowing you to turn off RGB lighting and turn performance to quiet mode for more chill environments with a simple keyboard command. Thanks to Alienware for sponsoring this video, and be sure to check out the M16 R2 in the description.